children, I am Auntie Mariana. My stories today are from Mello's Kingdom, written by Tuli Madonzella with Wenzile Kulekile and Zedekiah Msimanga. Our first story is Antile Ant learns about hard work. The mouth does not eat if the feet do not walk and the hands do not work. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. That is written in our Bible in Colossians 3 verse 23. Winter had arrived in the valley and Queen Zinga surprised Mello and her friends with warm jerseys, hats and gloves. She had worked hard knitting throughout the summer to have them ready for winter. As the little ones huddled around the fire, cozy in their warm clothes, Queen Zinga thought it would be a good idea to tell them a story about hard work and determination. One day, long ago, Andile the ant spotted Sandisu, the squirrel, dashing up a tree with stuffed cheeks. Andile was an arrogant little ant and laughed at Sandisu's efforts to store up food for the winter. There are other ways for you to exercise, you know, he mocked. But Sandisu's squirrel ignored Andile ant and carried on day after day, quietly running up the tree with cheeks stuffed with acorns and delicious nuts. As the days grew colder and the nights longer, the Queen of the Ant Colony called an emergency meeting. The colony had run out of food and Dile felt that the future of the colony depended on him. He had to do something. He crawled up the tree where he had last seen Sandisu. Hello, Sandisu Squirrel, he called. The next moment, Sandisu appeared. Can I help you? she asked politely. And Dile Ant felt ashamed because he had been rude to the squirrel. My colony needs food. Do you know how we could get it to our nest? he asked. Sandiso Squirrel burst out laughing. <laughs> what an easy question to answer. Just carry it back to your nest, she said. Then she showed Andile how she carried food up the tree to store it. Thank you, Sandiso. You have saved my colony, he cried happily. Since that day, Ants are always carrying food to their nests and are known to be hard-working and never lazy. Queen Zinga told Mello and her friends that hard work and determination pay off. She said, whenever we have something to do, we must work hard at it and do our best. We never accomplish anything worthwhile if we don't work at it and never give up. Queen Ginza's quizzy questions about this is Have you seen an ant carry a heavy load? And just think how hard he is working. What chores do you do at home? In our Bible in Proverbs 6 verse 6 to 8 it says You lazy people can learn by watching an ant hill. Ants don't have leaders but they store up food during harvest season. And also in Proverbs 13 verse 4 it says, Hard work will reward you with more than enough. There are lessons, six lessons actually, we can learn from ants. Ants are hard working and they carry more than their weight. Ants work together. Ants don't need a leader. They know what must be done and they do it. Ants follow the trail and they don't wander off. Ants plan ahead. They collect food in summer and harvest to make sure they don't go hungry in winter. 
and and share without complaining. Numkuzi Owl's wise words go, hard work pays off. Our next story is about the foolish leopard. In Proverbs 4 verses 25 to 27 it says, Keep your eyes focused on what is right and look straight ahead to what is good. Be careful what you do and always do what is right. Don't turn off the road of goodness. Keep away from evil paths. Did you know that he who will swallow Udula's seed must consider the size of his stomach? Queen Nzinga, Mello and some of her friends went camping. It was a dry season in the area and there was not much food on trees. Ganga, the monkey, suggested, Let's drink a lot of water while we look for more food. It can be dangerous if it's so hot and we don't drink anything. Queen Nzinga said, I agree, Ganga. We must all keep cool and hydrated by drinking enough water. As Queen Nzinga was explaining, she gave Mello and every animal friend the same amount of food. The nuts and berries she handed out were meant to last throughout the whole camping adventure. Tambo the lion and Winnie the leopard were not very happy with only drinking water and eating nuts and berries because they normally ate a lot of meat. In the late afternoon, the sun was still so hot that it made it difficult to walk out of the shade. Queen Nzinga said, Would you all please stay together while we put up camp? It is better if we all know where the others are, especially since night time is coming. Mello and Ganga the monkey tried to catch some fish in the nearby stream. Meanwhile, Tambo Lion and Winnie Leopard were getting more and more agitated. This is not fair, Winnie said. Don't they know I'm a leopard? I need meat. I know, Tambu said, but what can we do? Let's go look for some food deeper in the jungle, suggested Winnie. Nzinga said, it might be dangerous, Tambu said. What are you afraid of? We are the two biggest cats in the jungle. We'll be fine if we go together, Winnie said. I guess you're right. And off they went into the jungle without telling anyone that they were leaving. Tambu and Winnie soon came across a group of gorillas. Gorilla chief greeted the lion and the leopard. Welcome to my land, strangers. Is there something you need? Winnie said, uh, we're hungry and we need meat. Gorilla Chief did not like what he was hearing. He was afraid that the two big cats would try to steal their food or to put them in danger. So he came up with a sneaky plan. Gorilla Chief showed Winnie and Tumble around his land. When they got to a big thorn tree near the chief's cave, they saw some juicy steaks. They started drooling at the thought of eating them. Gorilla Chief knew this would happen, so he said, We are having a party tonight, and we are preparing the food for a few special guests. Gorilla Chief started talking to a nearby gorilla, and they walked off. Please excuse me, said he, as he left Winnie and Tambo alone with the juicy steaks. Winnie Leopard licked her lips. Can you believe our luck? We can eat these steaks and run away before the chief gets back. Tumble Lion said, no, we mustn't. This is not our food. I am hungry too, but it would be wrong to steal. 
Winnie cried, I don't care. I'm just too hungry to sit and look at this food and do nothing about it. Tambo tried to stop her, but Winnie got to the meat and started eating it. Tambo pleaded with his leopard friend to stop, but Winnie just carried on. Gorilla Chief was watching from his cave nearby along with all the other animals from his land. He had called the animals to safety as soon as he had spotted the leopard and the lion in his territory. Gorilla Chief and his friends chased Winnie beyond the horizon, where she was never seen again. The chief said, Thank you, Tambo Lion, for not giving in to hunger, for controlling yourself and trying to stop Winnie Leopard. Thank you for showing kingly integrity. Back at camp, Queen Zinga had sent Ganga Monkey to find the two cats. He moved through the trees and quickly found them. He rushed back to camp and said to Nzinga, I found Tambo Lion by Gorilla Chief's cave. Come, follow me. The campers joined the chief and all the other animals where Tambo was honored for his decision to not steal even though he was very hungry and much stronger than most of the other animals. Queen Nzinga said, I'm so proud of you, Tambo. You did the right thing. From now on, you will be known as the king of the jungle because of your integrity. Melo asked, What will happen to Winnie Leopard? Nzinga said, Winnie was given a choice and she chose to do wrong. She stole from Gorilla Chief. Winnie will have to suffer the consequences of her actions. Back at camp, Melo and her friends discussed the lessons they had learned about actions having consequences and about doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Queen Zinga's quizzy questions about this lesson goes, What should you do? when your friend did something dishonest. And in Proverbs 11 verse 3 in our Bible, it says, Good people will be guided by honesty. Dishonesty will destroy those who are not trustworthy. And the wise words from Nomkozi Aw says, You are free to choose, but not free from the consequences. Choose well. Let us pray. Dear Father God, please help me to think about whether my actions will have good or bad consequences. Help me to act honestly and wisely. Thank you for forgiving me when I make a bad choice. And Heavenly Father, please help us to be more like the ants to get our work done. Help us always to be diligent and not lazy when we have tasks to do. Amen. And now our time is up and it's bye for now from Auntie Mariana. These stories are read by Mariana Lawrence with permission from the book Mela's Kingdom written by Tuli Madunsela and co-authored by Wenzili, Kulikili and Zedekiah Mzimanga with assistance from Sua Duplessis and published by Christian Art Publishers. The book is available at all leading bookstores. Mm -hmm.